Welcome to the wonderful world of After Effects. Let's go! Now that we have our concept and story outlined through our boards in Photoshop, we need to go into After Effects and start to lay out these elements so that we can animate them. Now, you may be inclined to save out some of the assets that we created in Photoshop and import them into After Effects. That's not how I'm gonna approach this series because we've been using a ton of shape layers, which is something that we can do native in After Effects, and it's gonna allow us to maintain as much flexibility as possible when we go to animate. I'm sure some of you are wondering why this is a common approach. Well, oftentimes, design boards are used for the first approval stage with a client, whether it's internal or external. So as you head into the animation phase, you can feel confident that you're on the same page with the client. Another reason is oftentimes the designer and animator are actually two different people. So for this exercise, let's assume we got rave reviews and approval, and now we can begin to lay things out in After Effects. The reason we created these boards is so that we could use them within After Effects to help us with the layout and recreating the assets. So with all these artboards, I can go up to File, Export, Export As, and I can export, as long as all these are checked, I'm gonna export all of these at the, the 1080 by 1080 resolution that we outlined. And I'm gonna take those and import them into After Effects to use as the basis of how I will build out these assets. All right, so I'm creating a new comp within After Effects according to the same exact specs that I had. And I want this to be eight seconds or less. So let's set that up. And we have our comp. And I have the, the artboards. And let's clean this up a little bit. So I have, I have the artboards that I created from Photoshop. And we're going to take those artboards and drop them into the timeline. And let's kind of roughly outline how long things are going to take. Let's just do one second for a couple of these. And we're going to resolve on that one. So if we play back the timeline, you can see where we are. So it's super rough animatic here. and just trying to get a sense of how things look, how things flow, and we can go ahead and start to build our assets from here. So let's go ahead and get to it. And I like to do this in chunks. And the other reason I like creating these artboards first is because it allows me to basically chunk how I'm working when I, when I go to recreate assets within After Effects. And you could say, well, if you're going to recreate these assets in After Effects, why don't you just do it directly in After Effects? And the reason behind doing this in Photoshop, for me at least, is that it kind of separates the design and animation phases so that I am not thinking when I'm in After Effects, I'm like, oh, I want to jump the gun and, and start to make something move before I finalize what everything should eventually look like. So if you decide you want to try it and do it all in After Effects, by all means, up to you. This is just my workflow. So let's go ahead and pre-comp artboard one, and that's command or control, shift and C. And that's gonna pop up pre-comp. So I like to name these board one and double click into board one. And we're just gonna be recreating these assets. But before, before I get to that, I should mention that I also usually like to add a controller here and do the exact same thing that we did in Photoshop. We're going to add expression control, color control. So I'm gonna go into my effects controller and lay these out, primary color and commander control D, secondary color, same thing accent color and most teams have at least three colors that you can use um, so i'd use your primary secondary and accents here i need to color pick for me my primary color 
my secondary color. Oops, I did this backwards. My primary color is my light blue. Secondary color is the pink. Accent color is the blue. And the black was 0D, 0, 0100. I remember. Okay, so now I have my colors, and I want to make sure that those are consistent across the board. So I'm going to copy the controller here, paste it into Artboard 1. And let's just go ahead and do that with the rest of these two. Precomp Artboard 2. Artboard. Man, I can't type today. Board underscore three and art board underscore o four and let's just go into each one and make sure it has that controller at the top of it and we'll eventually get to how to better utilize that but essentially we want to make sure that we have access to all the colors and when we're creating shapes it's much easier to set the color initially and then if for some reason you decide you don't like these colors you can just batch change everything all at once so this is a good habit to get into so let's jump into board one again and we're going to recreate these assets as they are so if i click on my rectangle tool and it doesn't matter what color it is right now i'm just going to double click to fill my comp with this color and if i go on the search bar here and type color my fill appears and if i lock this effects controls panel my colors from my controller will stay up there and when i go down to my fill i want this to be the dark blue the accent color so there we have that okay and if you click this dot next to our board, it's going to solo it. So I can use that to kind of toggle back and forth. So for these lines, I'm going to go ahead and create, I clicked off everything so that when I hit G to pull up my pen tool, I will start a new layer. Now I'm going to create the lines for the court. Click over here once, hold shift, and click to the other side, and it created a line but I have my fill selected so let's go ahead and turn that off and for stroke I can fill it in and I want this to be fairly small right for accurate there too all right so port background lines sweet and let's go ahead and do the color again so this is a stroke and this is the primary color. Perfect. And now that I'm in the background court lines, I can make this easy on myself by clicking add and we're going to add a repeater. And, and the repeater is going to keep this all self-contained so that when I go down to repeater, I can, let's see, add five. You're not going to see that because it defaults to changing in the X. So if I turn off X, and let's say go 50 in the Y, not enough, 60, perfect. And now all I gotta do is make enough lines, perfect. So this is all self-contained now, and I can move this down below my controller, and I'm all set to go. So if I turn this off, the solo layer is no longer on and actually if I turn this back on we made this I think 10 or 12 percent let's go ahead and do that here all right turn off the solo and click off of everything now I'm going to create my center line and circle ellipse tool turn on my fill and again let's set up the color fill color Pick whip up to that light blue primary color. And if I click on the corner here and hold shift, I'm going to constrain and find about where I want it to be. 
All right, so let's label this, hit enter, center circle. All right, and now if I hit Q, it pulls up my shape tool here. And if I hit Q again and again and again, it gets me back to the rectangle. So shortcuts are huge. Learn your shortcuts, this is gonna help you a ton. And again, I have my fill selected, so that's great. And I'm just gonna outline what we have here and make sure this looks about the same. Perfect. So I really want my anchor point to be in the middle when we rotate this. So I'm just gonna make sure that I am smack dab in the middle here. Cool, that looks like they're pretty much in the exact same spot. And again, I want to open up my color and make sure that the fill is the same as my primary color. And we're in business center line. Okay, great. Looking pretty good. And so of all the trouble that I went to in Photoshop to make this basketball i'm just going to go into my artboard and save it out export as a png export and i can go into my project create an assets folder and command i will import my ball that right in there export it with a white background so let's just go in here effect king extract and undo my block here expand this out and i'm just going to drag the white away from the side there so i'm just extracting since since white it does not appear in the graphic or the image that I want. That makes life easy. And now I have my ball all by itself. And it's centered so I can do whatever I want. It's gonna rotate and everything else.